What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 41 and we start the episode off with an FA Cup third round clash against Milton Keynes uh, as they, not going to say the last part, as they travel to Liverpool uh, here at Anfield to take on Liverpool, why did I say that? Um, yeah, against Milton Keynes and obviously felt really confident um, to be honest, I mean I didn't need to play my first team, just played a, a really weak backup side, had like Pacheco and Gu up front and uh, had players like Danny Wilson at centre back, you know, felt, felt really confident in this game. But uh, unfortunately, MK Dons were going to try their best to uh, make it hard for us. And they did just that, but uh, just before half time, their resistance was broken when they just seemed to trip over each other. Uh, Cole found John Joe Shelby, <coughs> and uh, Shelby managed to put the ball past the goalkeeper. Uh, I think it's David Martin, who I think was actually a Liverpool goalkeeper many years ago. I may have that completely wrong. If I do, sorry. If I have it right, yay, I know good stuff about football. But uh, Daniel Powell found uh, Chadwick here. Chadwick cut inside. His shot went just wide of the post. But uh, MK Dons didn't really threaten too much, so it's no real surprise they managed to level the score up because for some reason I just can't defend at all. Uh, O'Shea down left hand side, cut inside. Played a great ball into Dean Bowditch. And that's a great finish as he puts the ball past Paolo Gazaniga. Was it was it Gazaniga or was it Brad Jones? Gazaniga or Brad Jones? It couldn't be Gazaniga, it wasn't signed yet. Must have been Brad Jones then. Okay, Brad Jones. Uh, yeah, the Australian keeper couldn't keep it out, and uh, unfortunately, it finished Liverpool 1, Milton Keynes 1. <coughs> but uh, yeah, uh, they did accept the transfer offer for Gazaniga, that's what I meant to say, uh, that being Blackburn Rovers. Um, obviously, I was determined to link up with my uh, future husband, and I uh, offered him six grand on a three year contract. Forgot to add, uh, add it up to five years, which sucks, so I'll have to offer him a new contract very soon. Well, not very soon, in three years' time. But uh, yeah, Chelsea just weren't going to give in for Aspilicueta. I just kept going up by a million plus Glenn Johnson, yet they just would not give him up and let me take him. But um, yeah, Shrewsbury as well, they wanted more money for uh, John Taylor. But I was perfectly fine paying it, because obviously in the last episode, or the episode before that, I can't remember, uh, you saw me ditch Luis Suarez for 29 million. So with that in mind, I had a little bit of money to spend. But uh, I decided to go for Insigne. Insigne. I would say that's how you pronounce that. Um, the young Italian, I believe he is, from uh, Napoli. And uh, I was determined to get this guy. I think I offered 9 million, which they accepted. But uh, yeah, you'll see in just a minute just how frustrating the negotiations were with this guy. But uh, we had the Capital One Cup semi final first leg away at the Emirates Stadium to take on Arsenal in this game. And uh, Arsenal. Uh, obviously one of the strongest sides in the league but um, this was just I mean I've got to be honest here it was like I slipped the referee a, black, a brown envelope you know it really was because for some reason uh, well, <laughs> well you just have to wait and see it was just hilarious but um, the first few minutes were pretty entertaining uh, both teams had some pretty decent chances uh, Arsenal had the best one here though when Cazorla found Theo Walcott Walcott found Robinho Robinho played the ball uh, I was going to say played the ball in there but his, his uh, free shot really was saved by uh, Pepe Reina should have, should have done better that really was a free shot for the guy but uh, this was uh, Bakary Sagner on the ball dribbling past my men goes past uh, Gonalons uh, plays through Cazorla Honda plays a great ball into Robinho his shot well saved by Reina but that was an amazing double save and there's Skirtle on the line to head it away that was brilliant defending from uh, Liverpool but this was Barini skipping past Sagner uh, the young Italian using his pace to full effect here down the left hand side. Sagner's pulling him all over the place, but he's like, dude, get off my back, man. You ain't had my shirt just yet. But yeah, his shot went straight at Wojciech Szczesny. And unfortunately, Barini picked up a bad injury in that uh, wave of play. So that completely sucks because we are sort of, uh, uh, sort of, um, what's the word? We we're running out of wingers and strikers, Willie. I was playing, I was playing Barini as a winger in this game, I think. And um, we we're running out of uh, a front line attacks, really. So Barini picks up an injury, and uh, that kind of sucks. We'll have to wait and see how bad it is. But uh, this is Rubinho picking up the ball. He plays through Honda. Uh, Honda with a nice piece of dribbling. Just keeps holding the ball. His shot is wide of the post by Pepe. Uh, seen wide by Pepe Reina. And from that resulting goal kick. Playing out from the back. I just love it. Even if it does cost me goals from time to time. Because it means I can just play the ball at the pitch with the pass. And uh, just keep the uh, keep hold of the ball. And uh, Barini showed no signs of injury when he skipped past two players here. Including Vermaelen. And what a strike by Fabio Barini. He clearly wasn't injured at all. He was faking that injury man. Lovely finish by Barini, and it's 1-0 to Liverpool. Great start to this game, and um, after the disappointment of a weekend draw against Milton Keynes, we really did need to win this game, so that was really nice to see. But this was Joe Allen breaking out here. I think this is a three-on-three -three attack uh, on the counter. Allen plays a great ball through to Barini. He goes through one-on-one with Chesney. Can he finish? Well, no, because he loses the ball. But it comes to Carroll, and he puts the ball just wide the post. But it goes out for a corner. Barini takes it. He swings the ball in. Here's Daniel Agger. It gets head up in the air, but Skirtle's header goes over the bar and Chesney breathes a sigh of relief but uh, just before half time Steven Gerrard picks the ball up here cuts past Emmanuel Frimpong 
And this is where the uh, title comes into play. Gerard takes a shot that's well saved by Chesney. Oh, excuse me. Throat's a little bit dry. But uh, the referee books Emmanuel Fringpong, and I have no idea why, because he, he barely even touched him. On the shirt pull, there was like the tiniest of shirt pulls, yet the referee said that was a uh, yellow card. So that was never a yellow card. That was a terrible decision. But uh, this is Andy Carroll actually swinging in the corner and not in the box himself. But he found Martin Skirtle and the Slovakian centre-back got his head to the ball and made it 2-0 to Liverpool on a stroke of half-time. The poor old Arsenal, they were thinking, Jesus, what is going on here? But uh, straight from kick-off, they managed to come back into the game. Nice pass in here as they work their way up the pitch. Arsenal, Arsenal play like Barcelona on this, you know, they really do. I know it's like a cliche, they play like Barcelona in real life, but... On this game, they seem unstoppable when they've got the ball at their feet. But the ball gets played into Rubinho, and the Brazilian centre forward manages to head the ball past Pepe Reina to make it 2-1. Uh, so unfortunately, the lead, the two-goal lead, only lasted for a matter of seconds. But uh, straight after half-time, this happens. Now, remember, Frimpong was booked in the uh, first half. Well, what exactly was he booked for here? Was it even a foul? I mean, oh wow, I mean, Arsene Wenger must have been furious, you know. This would have been one of the instances he actually did see. Because what's he got booked for there, man? Seriously. That was pathetic. Wilshere gets subbed on for Jovino. Arsenal lost all of their firepower at that moment. And, you know, like I said, it was like I slipped the uh, referee a brown envelope and just sort of, uh, you know, just... just just, uh, what's the word? Bribed him? Is that the right word? Yeah, because it was awful. But Gerrard's free kick hit the post and uh, Arsenal managed to hold on for a few minutes. But um, yeah, Frimpong should never have been sent off. It was uh, it was not a dench performance from that referee. And uh, yeah, he should never have been given a red card. But like I said, Arsenal lost all their firepower from that moment on. Uh, Fabio Barini in the 57th minute made it 3-1 to uh, Liverpool. And uh, Chesney's clearance here is poor. It comes all the way back out. Uh, but it comes to Andy Carroll. Goes through one on one. It's a great save by Chesney. But the six foot three English striker gets the rebound first and makes it 4 1 to Liverpool. Poor old. I felt sorry for Arsenal. You know, I really did. I mean, they, they did not deserve that. That was never a red card. Never a booking in the first place. Never a second booking either. So that was really hurtful for us. They, they didn't deserve that. But we just went on cruise control. I was determined to score as many goals as possible to make sure that in the next leg I could just play a backup team. But Andy Carroll, man, what a touch that was. That was that was fucking awesome, man. Seriously. I mean, he's he's not really the most agile of players, but that was awesome stuff. He skipped past Johan Juru and then smashed the ball past Chesney. That was fucking awesome, man. Uh, but that made it 5-1 at this stage. But um, Arsenal did come back here. Uh, Theo Walcott shot well saved by Reiner, who had an awesome game in this game uh, to keep the score at 5-1. But from that resulting corner, uh, Honda swang it in. And Olivier Giroud, who had only just came off the bench, managed to put Arsenal back in the game at 5-2. But the fact they were down to 10 men meant they really couldn't come back from that. And uh, despite doing their best to try and get themselves, uh, I guess, get themselves back into the tie, you know, they couldn't get themselves back into the game. But if they went to uh, Anfield, you know, three goals down, they weren't going to get through this uh, Capital One Cup semi-final tie. But if they go down by, you know, maybe two, one, or even zero, then yeah, that would be fine. They can, uh, they can come back into this tie with no problem at all. But. This was uh, Diaby here taking a shot, and like I said, Rainer, man, he was insane. He was saving everything. Uh, seems like a great goalkeeper. I don't really like the guy in real life, but uh, he seems like a great goalkeeper in the game. But uh, this was Honda's header well saved by Rainer. It was, it was incredible, man. Every single shot they took was on target, but Rainer was like, no way, man. Two goals is too many, and I'm not letting him score anymore. Uh, the ball was headed up to Juru here, straight at Pepe Reina, who just launched the ball uh, forward here. And that was, <clears throat> that was how the game finished, so... A 5-2 win away at the Emirates, and I mean, you know, just put our name into the, uh, the Capital One Cup final, because we're there, man, we're there. There is no way we're going to uh, lose a free goal lead uh, in the aggregate score uh, back at Anfield, so... Uh, you know, that we put, put us through to the Capital One Cup already. We're basically there. But uh, yeah, Paolo Gazaniga signs for Liverpool, so I'm reunited with my husband, which is awesome. And uh, uh, once again, Chelsea say they're not going to let uh, Azpilicueta leave, which just sucks, man. Just just let us take him, man. Seriously. Glenn Johnson is still a good right back. He's actually rated higher than Azpilicueta. But uh, Shrewsbury accept the uh, bid we made for John Taylor, which is great because, as I said before, he is just absolutely rapid and he's got some good stamina too, which I like. And uh, he's also four star skill. He'll be a great reserve player. And uh, Napoli accept the bid for Insigne, but this was frustrating as hell, man. As you'll see over the next couple of episodes, this guy just does not want to leave Italy. It is ridiculous. But um, I also decided to go for Luke Shaw. I thought, um, whilst I've got £29 million in the bank after the Suarez deal, um, I might as well try and sign some pretty decent young players and sort of nurture 
to these guys in the reserves. And obviously Luke Shaw, as we all know, is one of the best left backs in the game uh, five or six years down the line. So with that in mind, I'm going to go in for Shaw and hopefully I can pick him up because he's also English, which is great. And I think I offered one million plus uh, Galaxy. Was that it? Yes, it was. But uh, as always, guys, a big thank you for watching this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you for the next episode very soon. So I'll see you then. Bye-bye.